Good morning, good Thursday morning to you. Um, um, as we finish out another week of our daily devotions. Uh, today, I have another long scripture reading for you, so I apologize for that. But it is from the Gospel of St. John, and it is uh, John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And once again, we're talking about questions that Jesus asks. So John 6, verses 1 through 14. Hear now these words. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near, and when he looked up, he saw a large crowd coming towards him. And Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now, there, were a great deal, there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, and so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments that are left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up. And from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. This is a familiar story to us, right? The feeding of the 5,000. We've seen this and it's, it's a story that's told in all four gospels. <clears throat> I particularly like the story in the gospel of John though, because here they are, they look at Jesus, looks up and he sees this large crowd and he turns to Philip and he says, where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? And Philip says, well, gosh, I don't know. I mean, this would, even if we spent everything we had, six months wages wouldn't be enough bread just to give you to even each person just a little. So then they find, a, or Andrew finds a boy that has some fish and they sit down, Jesus blesses the bread and then they distribute it. And they distribute it, the bread and the fish and everyone has plenty to eat. It's a fantastic miracle, isn't it? What particularly intrigues me about this story is that Jesus turns to Philip and says, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? How many times do we put Jesus in a box and believe that we have to do it all on our own? Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? Notice Jesus didn't say, go buy bread for all these people to eat. He didn't say, here's some cash, run along. He asks the question because he wants to know if Philip knows who he's looking at. Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? I don't know about you, but I sometimes get discouraged when I see the people who are hungry, people who are homeless, people who are down on their luck, people who are going through rough times. I can't do everything. I can't feed them all. I can't do this. I can't do that. I wonder how many times that Jesus is looking right at me and saying, where are we going to buy bread for all these people to eat? There's an old saying that if God calls you, God will equip you. Do we believe that? Do we believe that if God asks us to feed 5,000 people, 
really asks us that we have to do it all on our own? No. God asks us to do kingdom things, but God equips us. God gives us what we need. It might not be more than what we need. It might be just enough. But if God has asked us to do it, God will be with us in it. So sometimes for me, it's easier to, sit, to see one person at a time. Sometimes God calls you to larger things. In any case, I thought today we could think about these things. We could think about whether we really trust that Jesus is able to do it, that Jesus is able to equip us to do what is needed in this world. He's called us to be kingdom dwellers, kingdom people. But I promise you, we don't have to do it alone. Where are we going to buy bread for these people to eat? The one who can provide, the one who is the bread of life, is right there beside us. Would you pray with me? Loving and most gracious God, thank you so much for every person listening today. God, I pray that you will give us the faith. Give us the knowledge that you will provide for what it is you call us to do. That you will never ask us to do anything on our own. That your grace, your love, and your mercy is always there for us. Help us to be your instruments in this world, oh God. To be the people that others look to and say, those are kingdom people. I ask all of these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, my friends, I hope you have a good rest of the week. Uh, fantastic weekend, fruitful and productive. I hope to see you on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. I'm going to be speaking on the foolishness of the cross. But for now, I pray you'll spend some time in meditation and prayer. Spend some time with Jesus. And I pray that the peace of Jesus will be with you. Bye-bye.